Hi, so, um, I'm not sure how all this video is going to go, as usual, but, um, basically, I have, um, my X61 tablet here, and, like, a month or two ago now, I got a fan replacement for it, because the current one kind of rumbles a little bit, and, uh, I just kept on procrastinating on putting it in, and so, uh, well, I don't have work tomorrow, so I figured 1am, perfect time to do this, so, um, <laughs> we'll see if my mind is actually in a good state for doing this right now, but I think I'm going to try to, um, swap the fan out, um, and just kind of talk through it as I do. I have the, uh, service manual open here, um, I don't know if I ever showed in any of my other videos how, how you can find these, but, um, for the older ones, the older models of ThinkPad, I think before, like, the X220, or maybe X230 now, um... Let's see if I remember that URL. No, I didn't. Um, okay, so it's download.lenovo.com slash EOL, which is for end of life. Um, and we, will, we want the hardware maintenance manual index. And um, yeah, it looks like the X220 is still on the main site. Wow. Okay, anyway, um, so, oh, and the download links are way off to the side, okay. So, yeah, the X60 tablet and X61 tablet are in this row, and so, yeah, here's where you can find the manual, and, uh, so I'm just using that. I've also saved the service manuals for my, um, X201 tablet and regular X201 as well, and um, basically any ThinkPad I use. It's one of the nice things about the older ThinkPads, and maybe even the new ones, but like, I, I just don't expect there to be as much you can do in them. Hope I'm wrong. Anyway, so, um, these, I, I feel, I'm tempted to skip this, but um, they have all these, um, different sections, and one of them should be um, able to, sorry, hiccuping, able to tell me um, how to replace the fan. So yeah, fan assembly, um, 1200. Let's move that bar off to the side there, and we can zoom this in a bit, and resize the window. So yeah, um, it tells us first we need to remove the battery pack, that's done. Uh, hinge caps, I did that. Um, I've actually broken one of these while doing this, but I have an extra because of my X60 tablet that I bought for um, the screen. So I purposely kept that off after the last job I did on this because I knew I'd have to open it again to replace this fan. Um, but yeah, the hinge cap is, on the tablet models, the thing that... Um, that covers up the cables that go into the top of the screen and that swivels around to let you fold the screen flat like that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's the second part you need to replace. Um, then the keyboard is where we will start. I think I did this in the other video, but I'll do it again. It won't hurt. Um, yeah, so I'm going to shrink this sidebar down a bit. And there we go. That's good. Now you can see um, where the screws are. And perfect. So yeah, all the palm rest and keyboard screws. Um, the palm rest being this left icon and keyboard being the right icon here. And they're all marked on the board, thankfully. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get started on that. Um, screw two. 
I'm just going left to right. Um, although I guess I have it upside down, so <laughs> right to left. So I did that one. I did, um, let's see. Looks like I need to do this one, actually. Yeah, so I guess um, yeah, it's showing four screws, but I'm pretty sure there's more than that here that I'm taking off. But maybe it's because I'm taking off all the screws that have the keyboard mark on them rather than just the ones it is listing, and also palm rest ones. It looks like there are actually only four screws that have the keyboard mark on them. So the last screw isn't coming out magnetically, so it's probably kind of popped in there. Yeah, there we go. Just by shifting the keyboard around a little, I was able to loosen that up and get the screw out. Um, and yeah, now it's saying you can push inward on the keyboard. This is like the X200 series. This laptop is a combo of X60 and X61 parts, but it is basically an X61 with um, a palm rest of an X60 and the screen of an X60 with the high res display. All right, keyboard's out. Now, the palm rest will have to come out as well. Um, keyboard bezel they're calling it and um, because this is the x60's bezel I am using the x60 instructions which means a lot of screws come out now um, this bezel is one piece on the um, x61 I mean two pieces on the x61 and one piece on the x60 so uh, it's a little bit different between the two just something to keep in mind whenever you have a manual that covers two models like this. Make sure you're still working on the right one whenever you go to a new page. Because even if they're similar enough that they feel like they can justify just making one publication, uh, there still could be differences that can be confusing or even just bite you. Um, but yeah, the, the bezels swap between the frames just fine. You don't need to have um, the X60 bezel, like, I mean, not bezel, the X60 body for the X60 frame to mount. It's basically just one part to snap down versus two parts to snap down, which I guess means shipping the parts is cheaper if um, you don't have to ship as big of a piece. Just for um, completion's sake, I'll scroll down to show the, uh, yeah, so that's how it comes off on the X61 normally, where there is actually a separate palm rest and top keyboard bezel. Um, but on the X60, it's all one piece. So that's what I'm doing. Uh... Okay, so I think I got, oh no, there's this screw here. Also, um, the screw's sizes are noted and that can be a good thing to remember. Um, and even to keep them separate if you're not sure you'll remember. So yeah, now I'm doing the, um, the screws back in the battery area. Sorry about the squeaky chair, by the way. My other chair um, needs fixing. <laughs> Think, thinking I'm going to use like angle irons or something to uh, reattach a piece where a bit of plastic broke that um, held up the back of the chair. So now I'm using my old IKEA chair, which has developed a squeak, but is otherwise still pretty serviceable. Um. 
but yeah, if that if that's annoying you, just I'm sorry. <laughs> I also missed this screw there in that corner. Okay, that looks like I got everything. So um, maybe I should remove the hard drive as well. I mean, I probably don't need to, but I'm going to do it. probably gonna have to come out eventually actually since I'm taking the motherboard out you have to take the motherboard out to get down to the fan on this uh, which is why it's a sort of big job to be starting at 1 a.m. <laughs> um, let's see yeah so I think I'm ready to pop off the bezel I did, I did leave that page a little sooner than I should have, but um, let's go back there. It looks like they're saying the first thing is to lift off the bottom a little bit and then pop the sides out or out and up or something. Hmm. I've done this once before, but I'm forgetting the blurred details. Oh, there it goes. So, um, let's try to put that on the camera better. Yeah, I just kind of pull out a little bit and up, and then this pops free. Um, and if I do the same on the other side, let's see, yeah, the plastic ends right under the uh, fan there. Hmm. Oops, shouldn't have pulled right there. Hard to get purchase on this side by comparison. But I did it. And be nice and gentle doing this, because this is old plastic, and if anything's not giving way like you think it should, it might mean that you have more work to do, and that you should uh, think twice about forcing anything. This might not be easy to find a new part for. Yeah, it looks like that's all free, so I should just be able to pop it loose and pull it out. But it feels like it doesn't want to give somewhere up here, but the top. There it goes. Twisting the screen helped a little bit. Um, there we go. <laughs> now it's top heavy. <laughs> the tablets are a little bit heavier than the regular ones. Um, alright, so now we go back here. And we got the keyboard bezel. We can skip the palm rest and keyboard bezel for X61 stuff. Um, mini Express card, or PCI Express mini card, sorry. <laughs> uh, and I just have the wireless LAN one, I think. Yeah, just the wireless LAN. Um, this card is not the original. Um, I stuck a card from uh, a Mac of some description. I think it was a MacBook Pro probably in here because the, well, the original card um, was getting warmer than I liked and also needed firmware blobs, which is never fun for me. So I replaced it with an Atheros card of similar specs. 
and it's been a little bit less hot. Also, um, the old card um, got the screws got the screws that were holding this thing down, like basically to fuse into the threads, I think. Or it could have just been Loctite, I don't know. In any case, it didn't want to leave, um, so I ended up dremeling a little, uh, slit in one of the screws so I could use a flathead screwdriver to pull it out after I stripped it. Um, yeah, so wireless card is out. Um, there should be two screws there, I think, normally, but I just stuck one in because I destroyed the other. Be careful if you dremel not to leave metal dust in here, by the way, or that can actually destroy things. Um, Alright, so we have that detached. Twelve hundred is going to be, yeah. Okay. So we have the Express Mini card out. LCD assembly that doesn't really have to come all the way out, I think, but you do have to do a lot of it. Um, it'll probably fall out, honestly. So I should probably move the keyboard that's behind this. There we go. There's a keyboard behind the laptop that it would probably fall on, like the screen. And uh, that keyboard controls my video feed and stuff, so that's not great to have there. Um, yeah, so with the LCD panel, there's a couple screws in the back they want me to remove, which I'm probably not doing unless I actually have to. Um, but I will have to remove this circuit board right here that um, connects the LCD connector to the main board in such a way that the cables don't have to flex all the way through there. Um, yeah. So, actually, the, this cable should be mentioned somewhere else in here, I think. Um, let's see. Yeah, so LCD and pen switch assembly. To remove the LCD, it doesn't show anything I haven't done. So I guess it just skipped a step. Well, that's good of them, but it's kind of obvious, I hope, what needs to happen here. Um, I've got that one out. Maybe I can get a closer view of this for you with another lens. I like that lens, but it's good to have options. Okay, gonna restart this feed thing. And, yeah, that's better. That's good. Now you can actually see what I'm, uh, what I'm dealing with here. Is this the same as these screws? Yeah. Since this doesn't seem to be documented properly, or at least not in a place I'm looking for it, I'm going to keep the screws for this um, daughter board thing set aside. Uh, yeah. That one was a little hesitant to come out. It looks like the head on these might be a little smaller, actually. Um.
Hard to say. Yeah, they're definitely smaller. Okay, where's my uh, precision screwdriver box? I have a little set of precision screwdriver bits and stuff that uh, I didn't think I would have to use in this video, honestly. So I'm going to look for those. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. They can't have gone far. Okay, wasn't there. Nope, found it. Here they are. All right. So, we need a small Phillipsy bit. Yeah, that's that's coming out nicer. A bigger head is usually better than a too small one, but if you're having to push down too hard with the big head, it probably means you need to go smaller. Well, you, you should use your own judgment. There's a little bit of crossover, I guess you'd call it. All right, these two look to be the same as the ones that were holding down the uh, outside keyboard bezel just below the battery pack. Sorry, just below the battery pack. Um, they're a little longer, but they have the same size of um, head on them, so they're a bit bigger than the others. Alright, so this is coming out. There's a connector under here like that and there's also the uh, connector that goes up into the um, hinge which is almost identical so yeah that's what you're working with here and that's a very similar design to what's in the X201 um, and X200 tablets so it's nothing especially new I mean, this is the older model, but like, it's uh, nothing too peculiar for these ThinkPad tablets. Okay, so we're down to here. The pen and switch assembly. Looks like they want me to remove the LCD for this, but it really doesn't seem necessary. I already have the pen out. Um, pretty sure the switch is this thing. Sorry. Pretty sure the switch, because of where the pen sits in the X201, I mean X61 tablets and X60 tablet, it's kind of in the front here. Pretty sure this is the switch. Um, Yeah, they're they're showing it uh hmm. Oh that's a piece of shielding they're showing there. Why is that part of this instruction? Oh oh it's the base cover, I see. So um Alright, yeah. This is going to be this switch. Uh, it's th this little thing down here, not necessarily this. And that's got a nice long screw on it, and the screw threads are, um, well, it's only threaded at the tip. Um, the back of it is smooth, so this one 
at least kind of stands out. Let's move the window out of the way a little. There you go. And trying to be nice and gentle, pulling this out. Oh uh, boy. I really don't need to remove it from the motherboard, really. It's just uh, sitting there. I mean, it's going to come out with the motherboard when I pull the motherboard out, you know? I just realized I might be getting social media dings that you're hearing, so I'm going to close all my browser windows. Just uh, so you don't go checking your feed or something. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm not actually sure this starter board has to come out either, the Bluetooth board or the um, modem board. I think, this, yeah, this is the modem board here. Um, sorry, I'll aim the camera better. This, uh, this is the modem board, I'm pretty much sure. Um, and Bluetooth is going to be right down at this end here this tiny little board which probably should come out because it looks like it's on a flex cable uh, flex cable ends right up here and I thoroughly expect that can get in the way so I'm going to unscrew it That's as far as the zoom go as the focus goes, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> there we are. Given that this was meant to be like a 50 millimeter lens for a 35 millimeter camera, uh, which makes it basically a general purpose, you get one prime lens, you're going to get this one. I guess the focus is really set up for that rather than uh, smaller sensors crop factor, which basically means that the picture is zoomed in, or zoomed in. <laughs> you're, you're seeing a smaller portion of the light that's cast inside of the chamber where the film or sensor sits. Uh, all right, so just intuitively, I can see that for this metal shielding piece to come off, which is part of the instructions here, this uh, dark shaded thingy. Um, to get that to come out, I'm gonna need to remove this screw. And... Oh, there's one more down in here. So there's a screw buried in here, in this little hole, which also is anchoring it down. So let's remove that. Another reason I do this on video is just so I can look back at the video and tell where to put something if there's something I'm completely lost on during reassembly, or I have parts left over, which is the worst. Um, all right, so I think with that I can detach the connector for the DC barrel connector and whatever this is as well. Yeah, sorry, um, yeah, so that, that plug is out and, um, this one will be next.
there it goes so those are out now um let's see i think that's probably everything i need to do uh there might be more screws under here and there's i think some maybe in the pci express or express card no that's card bus in the card bus um slot here is this card bus i'm pretty sure this is card bus yeah that's card bus i can see all the little pins in there um so a pcmcia kind of thing Mm -mm. Uh, so there's some screws in the underside still. Fun. Yeah, I see. There's a, a screw right here over by the VGA connector. And that is anchoring the motherboard down. It would appear. Is this going to come out now? It's looking like it wants to. Let's pop this SD card out. <laughs> yeah, I think these, um, the express card, um, the not express card, I keep calling it that. This card bus slot needs to have these screws removed from it. These are more little silver things. I've kind of stopped following the maintenance manual a little bit. Hopefully my confidence isn't misplaced, and at least I'm filming this. Yeah, that, that looks to have done it. Um, Let's see. Yeah, this is coming out now. Let's uh, pull up this tape so the Wi-Fi antenna cables don't anchor it down. And... Hmm, is it still anchored by something? Yes, it's the modem card, of course. So you do need to remove the modem, I think. Or maybe the speaker. Yeah, the modem. It looks like it's kind of anchored. I should aim the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. This uh, cable goes underneath here, and it connects to the side of the modem card. So. I am going to unscrew the modem after all. I was hoping I could skip it. Oh well. Hmm. Oh, and there's um this cable over here, which I forget what this goes to, actually. I used to know but I have since forgotten. All right, motherboard is out. So, yeah, I'm going to move the laptop chassis out of the way for a little while. Yeah, here's the motherboard. <sighs> Moving the camera back. And, um, yeah, I'm here to replace the fan, which is up top. So, going back here. Got a remove a couple screws it looks like. I think I've done this before actually. Yeah, I've done this before. I um, tried swapping out the fan with the one from the X60 to see if it was any better, to see if I could avoid buying another fan. 
and I ended up buying another fan because they were both rattling and the one in the X60 was actually worse than the one I was hoping to that I that was in the X61 to begin with so um yeah uh that is one 3.5 millimeter screw and PC card slash express card slots. Huh. Do some of these have express cards? Sorry, I'm getting off track. Um, yeah, so... Um, and step two, loosen but do not remove the screws. Yeah, that looks right. Um, step one is do this. Let me move that over. There we are. Step one, that screw there, and yeah, that's gotta be step three. It looks like it's just the cart, like the paperish cover thing. You um, will notice that this new fan that I've got is a little bit different than the old one. I'm pretty sure it's a heat sink from a higher performance model, like the maybe the X61S or something, because I think this is the highest speed CPU that they offered, and like 1.6 gigahertz for the tablet models. Um, oh yeah, I forgot this connector was also bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be replacing this. Because uh, this connector was also faulty, like broke apart in my hand when I removed the fan. So hopefully this one works. <laughs> but yeah, here's the old fan assembly, and um, here's my new one. Uh, let's move the motherboard back. So. Oh yeah, I'll flip it so you can see better. So right off the bat, you will hopefully, let me full screen this. Yeah, right off the bat, you'll hopefully notice that, um, well, obviously this one's black, this one's silver on the underside. Um, also, the metal brace that connects the, um, that, that sits over top of the, is that the CPU? Uh, yeah, that's the CPU. Um, the, the piece that sits over top of the CPU, um, this brace is different. There's copper here instead of aluminum, so this is going to suck heat out much better, hopefully. Also, these vents are copper on here instead of, I'm guessing, aluminum on this. So this is just a better product in general. Also, the um, copper piece seems to be just a tiny bit um, bigger on the back part here, which I think sits over the chipset probably, like the north bridge, or I, I think that's what it would be. Yeah, so um, nice copper piece here. Um, this is part number 42X3804. Um, Let's see, can I focus it? Yeah, sort of. 42X3804, and some sellers sell different, like they sell this thing as the 42X3804. They might even have that part number, but they're not the same fan at all. Um, don't even know who made this one. Oh, Toshiba, Toshiba made this one. Matsushita, which is Panasonic, made this one, and you can tell that because the, um, ah, gonna have to do this again. This, this M character here, which you can maybe barely see, uh, that M character in the box 
is Matsushita's trademark or logo. And Matsushita is Panasonic for all intents and purposes. Um, so yeah, had to order this thing from China. I'm sure it's like used, but hopefully it works fine. Don't have too many choices. <laughs> oh, and the, uh, looks like the kind of silicone pad thing stuck to the chipset. Hopefully it's okay that I just put my finger on it a little bit. But there's already a pad on this. And it looks like it's probably about the same thickness. Let's see. Yeah, so this is actually covering up, like, everything under here is copper. This, this is, the, the shielding here is correct, it would appear. And they do overlap, so that should be fine. And actually, because of the rectangular shape of the die on um, the, um, I'm guessing, North Bridge over here, uh, that makes sense for it to be fatter like this and rectangular. So... I'd say this is good. Um, also, the heat pipe itself is thicker. Um, another thing you might notice here, the top one being the thicker one. So, just probably a better part in general. Also, I think the fan might, even though it's plastic riveted in, um, you might be able to replace the fan if you were to put, get some screws and tiny bolts or something. Uh, versus this one's in a aluminum canister, basically, so that might be harder. Anyway, hopefully I will end this video recommending this thing, because it feels much more substantial to me. And might keep the thing a little cooler. Not that it was overheating, but coolness is good. Um... Let's see. Yeah, so I just seeded that in. Sorry, I kind of did it off camera, but yeah, that'll fit. That cable will fit just fine. Um, so I'm guessing yeah I'm, I'm guessing we should do this in the reverse order so screw down these three first the step two parts and I'll try to kind of evenly do them So I'm hopefully applying kind of even force to this thing. The springs on the underside of this are meant to um, prevent you from, like these these springs here, um, are meant to kind of prevent you from exerting too much force, I think, and um, breaking the die. At least I'm pretty sure that's the case. I'm not an expert and I have no formal knowledge of this. Just wisdom I picked up here and there. Alright, so I think this is 3.5 mil. I can probably... Do I have a ruler handy? Sort of. I have my Leatherman which has a tiny little ruler on it. Um, okay, so 3.5 millimeter, I think, was what we were looking for. And 
it looks like it is about 3.5. Okay. So that's this screw here. And now that all feels nice and secure. Let's plug it in before we forget that and start wondering why our computer's getting really slow and overheating and all the rest of it. Overheating worse than before. Not that it really actually overheated, just got warmer than I would like. Hmm. Does this plug fit? If this doesn't fit, I'm going to be kind of annoyed. I must admit. Yeah, I think this is going to do that to me. Potentially. So, with this, yeah. Or is it because the, this piece of plastic stayed in? Ah, it is. So part of the connector broke off and was still in here from the old fan. That's our problem. Let's see if I can coax this thing out. If you have a spudger or something, use that instead. There we are. That came out. And yeah, the underside looks very similar now, so I think this is gonna fit. It's gonna fit beautifully. Yep, that plugged right in. So this did have this piece of foam on it. I don't see one on here, so I'm just going to steal this. <laughs> and put it on the top of the copper here, under the assumption it's supposed to have one. <sighs> Alright, so... Yeah, now we've got a new fan on there. I guess now I have to put the thing back together and hope that it all works okay. I stuck the old fan inside of the little packaging that this one came in for the moment, even though the connector's busted, because I can probably splice a connector or something. Um... Okay, so to replace the motherboard, I'm gonna need to have the chassis the chassis back, so let's get that going. nicely yet? Not quite. Gotta fit the 
Let's fit the audio connectors like the headphone and microphone jacks. And those look okay now. And reroute the fan cable so that the fan cable isn't bumping into anything that it shouldn't be. And make sure these two cables up here don't get buried. And that looks to be going now. Nice. All right, so modem's back in. Pretty sure these two screws are the ones for the modem card. I'm going to lose track. <laughs> but if anything doesn't feel quite right, or you feel like you're having to apply too much force, or like you didn't have to spin the screwdriver long enough, or anything like that, Better safe than sorry. Pull it out. Don't don't like keep forcing anything. Like don't force things. Just in general, don't. You'll be sorry. Okay. So the screw that had the smooth section on it is what I'm looking for now because that's what I was using for the um, for the pen switch piece also the Bluetooth board should go in since I pulled that out Might as well do that now. Before I'm almost done closing it up and I realize, ah, they won't close because of this. I'm pretty sure this had a screw like this as well. A little silver guy. Hmm. Nope, it wasn't that one. That one doesn't want a thread. Yeah, so it's not that screw. Could be this one. Let's see if that works any better. Hmm. I do notice there's a little metal ring around one of these uh, one of these holes, but not around the other one. So I'm kind of curious if that has something to do with it. Or if I'm just totally forgetting and it was a fatter screw, which is quite possible. Yeah, that, that screw fits in. Let's, um, let's check the video that I'm currently making. It might have our answers. I think I can do this because of the format that I'm encoding to. Just look at it live. Yeah, this is gonna work. Maybe. Ah, uh, the timestamps are all messed up. Never mind. Well, um, I'm guessing through process of elimination and the lack of other screws this thickness that it's a shorter black screw like this. And in fact, I'm guessing this is it.
Has anyone seen Mrs. Claypool's wedding ring? It looks kind of like this. In fact, this is it. <laughs> sort of a Marx Brothers paraphrase, if not word-for-word -word quote. I like those movies. They're some of the oldest movies I really enjoyed. 1930s comedy with a sort of... I would call it anarchist bent. Very um, irreverent to authorities and um, a vaudevillian in nature, I would say. The A Night at the Opera is... well, I was actually rolling on the floor laughing at um, not just a raffle, but like the thing people say when they aren't really rolling on the floor laughing, but like legitimately rolling on the floor laughing. Great film. Um, yeah, this isn't it. It's going to be a shorter screw than that. I bet it's this one. There we go. By the way, apparently there's a mod you can do with um the Express card or PCI Express mini PCI Express slots where you um run a wire between two pins and it ends up overclocking the the um I guess fret side bus is what you call it which um and then you need to like flash your RAM to make it operate properly but um it's an overclock people have done and it's kind of intriguing I might try it at some point um, if this cooling fan works nicely. <laughs> um, I expect it'll be an upgrade. I had to buy this thing from China. So, like, I already said that. That's right. Um, okay, so that's in... Now, probably I need to do this. If I recall correctly. Yeah, that feels right. Although the wireless LAN cables should go over, not under. All right. And there was one screw that was buried down here. And that's now in. And there was one screw that sort of stayed on top. which was on the other side, I believe, right about there. Yeah. And then um, the rest of it was held down by this circuit board. It would seem. So the first thing you gotta do when you're doing this is to reconnect the board up top where it meets the cable that goes into the screen or into the hinge which leads to the screen <laughs> and then snap down the other side 
and then remember what the screws are. And I don't remember what the screws are, so I'm going to go back to the PDF finally. And... Let's see. Base cover is what it was, so it was up here. <laughs> Looks like I got that about right. And yeah, I did push this down into the into the recession there. Like step three here. Then um Yeah, we have, yeah, I still need to find that screw that had a partial threading. Found it. Let's just do the uh, stylus pen switch before I forget. There we go. Good as new. So, now, yeah, it, this is the thing where the LCD didn't actually, oh, LCD assembly, LCD extend board, ah, uh, that's what it's called. So, Silver six millimeter screws. So those are going to be some of the longer ones, I do believe. I only appear to have two six millimeter screws like that, and I have one that's longer than that. Yeah, that'll be the 9mm for step 2. I'm gonna do these out of order. Get the 9mm out of the way. Let's focus that. And brighten it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, just because I can only see the two six millimeter screws doesn't mean there isn't a third. I could have lost it. That is not uncommon. Might just replace it with a smaller one. Ooh. I just heard something drop. Thank you, magnetic tip. just made me lose a screw. I love magnetism. Alright, uh, the video feed just cut out, so let's, uh, I accidentally hit the pause key. Alright, so... Oh, oh, that's my video capture. Oops! Um... There we are. So yeah, I just lost a screw as I was lifting my screwdriver up because uh, it grabbed magnetically one of my screws and knocked it onto the floor. So I'm going to quickly see if I can spot that wherever it landed. Alright, I found it. Mission successful. <sighs> that would have been really annoying. Oops. There we are. So yeah, um... 
I also might have an extra in my little screwdriver carrying box thing. I tend to keep stuff around like that. Yeah, I think I do. I do. Cool. Okay. Or at least one that's very, very close. So, we needed three of those. The number one type screw. There's one of them. And there's two of them. And number three is up here. There it goes. All right, so I got those three in. And I'm pretty sure all the cables are correctly seated there. I really hope so. Um, is this together enough that I can try turning it on just to make sure I didn't kill the thing? Probably. Alright, my charger cord. Hopefully this thing's plugged in still. I haven't used it in some time. It's probably unplugged. I don't see a light coming on. Yep, unplugged. We can fix that though. All right, now is the charge light. Yep, charge light comes on. Keyboard's plugged in. Yep, it boots, or at least it starts to post and do memory checks. Does the fan come on? Yeah, the fan comes on. Cool. All right. So, the fan spins, and This all seems to be installed correctly so far. So now I'm trying to think what else I need to connect. Uh, there's two screws that need to go through the um, card bus slot cage. Don't want to forget those. So let's take care of that. And there's also one that's going to go on the underside of the computer that anchors it down to the uh, motherboard. Well, that anchors the case, the motherboard to the case, or whatever way you want to say it. Functionally equivalent, I think. And 
that screw was this tiny little one, maybe? No, 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 not that tiny one. I know where that goes. It's probably this one. Yeah, that feels right. Okay. At the very least, it was one like that. Okay. So... Now... Probably wouldn't be a bad time to try to... Reroute the wiring for the wireless antenna. There's a routing diagram, I think, for this. Let me check that and also aim the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Um, might be under LCD assembly. Or the LAN card. Okay, it's under the LAN card. You can see how it's routed through the channel back there. This isn't really the picture I'm meant to be following, I don't think, but it's definitely working. So, stick that back down. Nah, this tape is not, not got anything left in it. where my electrical tape is. I'll peek in one place and I'll be back in like 20 seconds. scissors and I got my electrical tape and uh, the old tape wasn't sticking to the stuff that I had been using from last time I took it apart so we're just gonna stick a new piece down to help keep this in its channel piece a bit further down. I need captain tape. It's just something I need to buy. Want to donate some money? <laughs> so that I can do things better? Not got a job at the moment, so it would be appreciated, but I... I feel so bad about begging. Okay, yeah, I did this wrong. The antenna cables, I think, should go underneath the PCB here. So, we're gonna have to pull this out again. under and into the channel like that. 
probably. That feels better. Okay. We're going to say that that is what I needed to do. And one goes here. do the rest of these now. Um, LCD extend board. And they're all silver, so. And I basically only have two sizes of silver screw left. And I had kept the ones for the extend board in their own area, so I am relatively confident I know which ones I need to use. And they're really tiny. Well, not the tiniest. I think the tiniest are for the casing, but like under the battery compartment. Let, let's check. 2.5 mil. That's pretty small. But how small is pretty small? Let's, uh... Yeah, that's like... That's about right. That's about right. But this is writer. So, <clears throat> I'd say these are three or 3.5 that I was just trying to put in. And the smallest ones are actually the ones that go here. sit properly. I feel like there's one more piece I need. Hmm. Ah, oh, that's for the top of the lid. I should probably just try to route these cables for the antenna. Looks like I should have the gray one in the middle just because that's the way the cables seem to light seem to want to fall. Often these cables kind of know where they need to go, you could say because they were already bent in a specific direction 
from when it was previously assembled. There, I think there's a special tool. Sorry, I, I'm not on camera. I think there's a special tool for um, connecting to these cards. You can kind of do it by finger, but like, it's pretty annoying to line up. It shouldn't take a ton of force. So if you're having to push down hard, you're probably doing it wrong. screwed down. That looks pretty even. I'm pretty sure I'm down to... Yeah, I have four screws left of the silver kind, which is how many I needed for the back of the bezel. So yeah, I think I'm basically done. I need to put this back in. Oh, I have the pen still in here. It was just kind of hooked on the inside of the bezel. <laughs> Um, maybe that's why it wasn't coming out so easy. Yeah, okay, that's in. And the rest is kind of falling into place, which is probably how it should be. So... Now for these... Yeah, th those are going in right. These are probably the right screws. Although, I'm pretty sure this one is meant for going in here. You know, I probably cross-pollinated between um, these two X61s, or well, between the X61 and the X60. So I bet that's where a lot of my grief is coming from right here. Maybe even from my X200 series. Wouldn't surprise me very much. Yeah, this is probably right. I was just noticing that the head was a little bit different on one of the screws. Or it could mean I misplaced something inside. <laughs> All right. Have the four in the back down. Um, man, I love this thing. Okay, um, like a, that, that isn't sarcastic or anything. I really do love this thing. It's a great little laptop. Yeah, I'm doing the tiny little, there's one screw that's smaller than all the others, and it sits up in this corner of the case. So I was just doing that, since I knew what it was.
pretty sure I just need to start screwing now. Hmm. That one won't go in, I don't think, because there's no keyboard, right? Yeah, there's no keyboard. I can do the palm rest screws that don't show any other signs, but... For the keyboard ones, those have to wait. Until there's actually a keyboard inserted. guide there on the screw length. That's cute and nice of them. I don't think my X201 has that. It might, but I don't think it does. Hmm. I still have a fair number of screws left. Here I have six. Well, that's great. <laughs> Hopefully I'll figure it out as I'm going. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I have five that need screws in them. So five out of six or six out of five or whatever. And one of these I think I found sitting around on this countertop already and I just kind of put it over with the rest under the assumption it had come from this machine and I knocked it out of the way. So honestly, under that assumption, I think I can remove this screw because I remember it was smaller than the others. Sorry, that was up top. Um, and I can put this in in its place, since it's the same length as all the others. That's what happens when you have finished projects or when you take something apart and don't put all the screws in one place. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't be like me. You can still save yourself. All right. So now I'm down to the keyboard screws. And the keyboard's relatively easy. I'll try to put it in view. Be a little bit better of a video host person. Doing what I can. <laughs> I hope I'm helpful anyway. Or at least interesting. But yeah, let me know if you have questions or if I did something really sloppily and you have a comment on it or just want clarification on anything. Happy to do that. And I'm happy to hear your thoughts and try to improve myself. Alright, so yeah, you kind of slide it in and under and then pull it back so that the... Um, there are these little places where, 
let's see if I can make this more visible. Like uh, places like this where it bulges out a little bit, the keyboard, like little tab-like things. And um, so you want to slide the board up and under, up top, and rest it flat, and then pull down just a little so that the tab thingies slide just a tiny bit underneath the plastic of the palm rest area. They don't have to be far or anything, just a little bit under there. So it's nice and secure. And now, I'm holding the keyboard from behind with my other hand, just to keep it flush. I've found that helps when you're screwing the keyboards in. To get them started threading. one here one here there it goes yeah nice and finally One right here, kind of hidden under the battery compartment, or under where the battery would slide. And now the hard drive and the hard drive screw, or SSD in this case. This is a wooden nickel from a record shop under here. <laughs> I just found it's the exact right size to, um, Yeah, so it's it's like a little coupon thing where if you um, if you get ten of them, like it's money off on a record from a record store here in town. Yeah, so um, that's like perfect to space out this thing because uh, this used nine millimeter tall. Um, 2.5 inch hard drives and most SSDs like SATA SSDs and also um, SATA hard drives nowadays for consumers are seven millimeters tall rather than nine though you might not want to use one of these for a hard drive just because you can put downward pressure on it maybe might not be good for the thing um, yeah, it goes in like this. Okay. Okay. And now the cover. The cover has this little um, kind of overhang piece on it. Um, A little L-shaped. That's so bad. A little kind of L-shaped hook or tab thingy on it that it uses to latch into place. Yeah, you can see it better from this angle. And that needs to go. Um, needs to go in first. There's a little slot in the side here where it goes in. So you just. Uh, kind of take it from the outside and slide it on up like it's swinging on a hinge or something and then it'll lie nice and flat and you can screw in the screw for the hard drive cage or the hard drive cover which is larger and thicker than any other screw in the entire computer I think well at least it's fatter um, not longer than anything but yeah so, I think that's back together. I remembered to do the Wi-Fi antenna. Let's slide the uh, stylus pen back in. 
make sure that goes okay. Yeah, that goes in fine. Good. Um, flip it over. I have a battery pack here. And slide this latch. And make sure that one's latched. And if you have the um, hinge cover, put it on. I do, but I don't know exactly where it is on this desk, so I'm going to save that for later. Okay, moment of truth. Does this thing start? Yes, it does. Fan's not running quite yet. But that that makes sense. Yeah, 3 a.m. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'll move out to the wide lens. So that you can see a little better again. There it goes. And we're at the login prompt. Yeah, I'm not going to type my password in on screen. Let's uh, let's not do that. All right. Yay. Looks like it's together. Maybe I'll try doing something on it really fast. See if I can get the fan going. Why not connect the speaker? I have a feeling I might not have. Well, the fan's going now. I can hear it. Or not really hear it, but I can feel it. And the fact that I can't hear it means it's good. So. I'm calling that a win. I'll probably fix the speaker off camera because I'm done for tonight. But um, yeah, I got the laptop back together with the new fan in. Um, it doesn't make the same rumbling noise anymore. So that's a plus. I was getting really annoyed by that. Anyway, yeah. See you later, guys. Um, I'm done for now. I need to sleep. <laughs> Bye.